feels like it's been pounded with a lead pipe. I guess it wasn't a bad dream after all. I wonder how I got here to my office. All I remember is flying pipe and stars. Damn it! After all the trouble I went to to get that stupid statuette, someone just walks up and takes it like candy from a baby. And my wallet's gone too. I hope somebody on the street saw me get jumped. I've got 29,000 reasons to get that crystal bird back. Hopefully I haven't used my tube of miracle facial cream. It should help reduce the swelling and make me look almost human again. Talk to me, handsome. <laughs> Sorry, Tex. I, I didn't see a thing. You know, I'll let you know if I hear anything. Hey, Maisie! You got jumped, huh? You must have crossed Daddy Ching. You didn't hear me say this, but Eddie Ching owns this whole section of the city. You won't get any more information on him than that. Sure, I heard of him. Billionaire. Made his money in mining and colonizing up on Mars. Oh, Tex, why can't all the men be like you? What do you mean, uh, broke, stubbly, and undependable? Listen, Tex, you are a dream compared to that pig husband of mine. Sal's gone too far this time, and I've got to do something about him. It's humiliating the way he's been flaunting his latest affair with some floozy. If I had some hard proof he's been sleeping around, I could finally divorce him and get some money from him. I'm sorry things aren't working out. If there's anything I can do to help, short of sleeping with you, be sure to let me know. Oh, Pooh, you sure know how to break a girl's heart. But there is something you can do for me. And then I will do something for you. I saw you get jumped last night. Sal told me to keep quiet and that telling you would put my life in danger. But I'm willing to talk if you'll give me some proof that Sal is having an affair. Then I could divorce him and get some of the money he's been hiding away all these years. You drive a hard bargain, Francesca. But I need a lead on my case, so I'll see what I can dig up on Sal. I don't know anything about the girl Sal is seeing. I've gone through his things, but haven't been able to find anything except for this note. I think it's meant to be a coded message. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have anything more for you to work with. Let me know when you've got something. Too bad you don't like fresh brains, mate. Hot off the grill. Franny told me you got whacked. I haven't heard any word on the street about who would have done it. I've heard his name, but I don't know anything about him. He's some billionaire. I think he runs some kind of operation on Mars or the moon. Am just opened the electronics place a while ago. He's come by for lunch a couple of times. Usually orders the brains and eggs platter. As a matter of fact, he just left. You'd probably be interested to know that he tore up a note and left it in the trash. Louis tells me he just took the garbage and dumped it in the trash can just outside the brewing stew. This is where Louis throws out the garbage. Street people come from miles around to sample Louis' award-winning leftovers. These must be the note scraps Louie told me about.
The Golden Gate Hotel was once known as the Waldorf of the Pacific. Its halls are still sturdy, and the walls have worn well. But there's nobody living inside. Ardo Newpop is a gigantic goon who works at the front desk at the Golden Gate Motel. Ardo's no rocket scientist. In fact, he probably doesn't even know what a rocket scientist is. Anything good on the tube today? Uh-huh. I'm watching the Captain Wallaby show, and he's so funny. Captain Wallaby, your favorite show? It's my third favorite show. My favorite is the Inspector Burns Fire Safety Show. You know, Ardo, Inspector Burns and I are really good friends. You are? Wow! I'd do anything to meet Inspector Burns! Look, Ardo, if you'll answer some of my questions, I might bring Inspector Burns in to meet you. Would you like that? Okay. I can answer some questions, but first I have to put on my fire hat because Inspector Burns' fire safety show is going to be on pretty soon. I don't know what that is. I went to his pawn shop because I thought he would have Inspector Burns action figures, but he didn't, and I got mad at him, so he probably don't like me. Ooh, Chelsea is pretty cool, because she's got good magazines and stuff. That's where I bought my Inspector Burns fire safety manual. He's a nice guy, and I like to eat there because there's a TV. She's the lady who makes the best pizza. I eat at her pizza place all the time because I love it. I just want to be like my hero, Inspector Burns, because fire safety is very important. I heard about that, but I don't know what a crusade is. I used to watch his TV show, and it was pretty good, but then it stopped. And then he opened a store down the street, and I used to go there and buy stuff, but then it closed. This guy comes up to me and says he don't like you hanging around here. So he gives me a bunch of money and says he'll pay me more if I keep you out of here until he goes away. Boy, word travels fast. Sal must have heard I was working for Franny. I heard Sal visits here a lot, and I'd like to get inside and look around, but Arda won't let me in. Maybe he'd let someone else in, though. Now I've got an Inspector Burns disguise that would fool his own mother. It certainly ought to do the trick on a goofball like Ardo. It's my hero, Inspector Burns! And you must be Fire Ranger Ardo, my biggest fan in the entire world! Yes sir, Inspector Burns! You must have got the letter I sent you! Well, of course I did, Ardo. You know, I read all my fan letters. I know you do, Inspector Burns. You're the best. Well, I'm all ready to inspect the hotel for fire safety. This can be a dangerous job, Ardo. I'd better do the inspection solo. Oh, I understand completely. I better not leave the front desk anyway. I'll just open the doors for you. After a few minutes, I find the door to the Regency Escort Service Hotel Suite. The door's locked, but there's a security panel on the wall beside it. Looks like it requires a password. So this is the Regency Escort Service Love Suite. Now that I'm in, I'll need to find something to prove that Sal's been a frequent customer. Boy, that rug looks expensive. Judging by the stains, I'd guess things occasionally get out of hand around here. Nice chandelier. The escort service spared no expense. And some columns. Looks like they're made out of marble. 
Those chairs look pretty comfy. I'll bet Sal's made good use of that couch. Man now wishing he hadn't gotten drunk and challenged the other guy to a duel for insulting Rosie, the toothless wench with the heart of gold. Girls looking for contact lens. Nice cathedral. Oh, that's a great looking table. A book about the history of the Golden Gate Hotel. Looks fascinating. This looks like a switch of some kind. Probably has something to do with the lights. The air vents keep the room right at room temperature. Plastic plants, as always, add that special touch to a room. This appears to be a very poor copy of Monet's Drowning Frogs. I'd call this one, Two Girls Bothered by Ants on a Picnic. This must be titled, Mishap on the High Seas. A twisty board game. I used to play this as a kid. I wonder what the escort girls do with it. Looks like a piece of bright shiny foil. Must be from a bottle of champagne. Nice. Boring, but nice. I'm starting to think this painting's following me around. A rose bush by a fence. Pretty exciting stuff. This painting is very yellow. A list of names. All female. Looks like Sal's a regular here at the Love Suite. The bed looks deluxe. Firm, but not too firm. Looks like a nice vacation spot. Lamp adds a nice touch. The nightstands balance the bed nicely. I love symmetry. Uh, frilly panties. I hope they aren't Sal's. I'll bet this love seat's lived up to its name. This is a piece by that famous dead artist Van Popper entitled uh, Corpse in a Field. I don't think I ought to open that credenza. It might be full of Sal's underwear. Which one's cheating? Look closely. My Uncle Stan used to wear a tie with that same pattern on it. You know, suddenly, I'm hungry for a fruit cup. I bet this desk would look even better in my office. I love finding unlocked drawers. Twelve cents. Some people would take this change, but not me. Cash maybe, but not change. Hmm, a camera. Too bad there's no film in it. There's no dust on it, though. Must have been used recently. A Gideon's Bible. It figures. Everything points to Sal being an aspiring televangelist. Looks like the upper left drawer is locked. I'll bet I could open it if I had something to pick the lock. Well, I certainly hope Sal doesn't come out of the closet. Apparently this closet doesn't get used very often. 
Hopefully this isn't Sal's negligee. The color's all wrong for him. Champagne glasses end up in the weirdest places. Oh, it's last month's Playbub magazine. Looks like it's stuck inside the drawer. Ah, French doors with American knobs. Lavish, yet practical. Large Tudor-style windows. Got a nice view of the city. A Larson Grand Piano. Wow. That's even better than a Stoffway. A matching Larson Grand Piano bench. Hmm, a piece of sheet music. Let's see, Lucido L'Amour. Must be Western music. Good evening, ladies and germs. I'm your entertainer tonight, Mr. Franco Spinoza. I'm gonna be playing some songs that I know you'll love. Listen to this one. Hard and cold, it's what it does to me. Hot and cold. Passion's Breath Room Deodorizer. Mm, it smells terrible, but it's got a magnet on it. And magnets can be handy. Mm, and some pillars. These must be the famous hanging gardens of Golden Gate Babylon. That hot tub actually looks like it might be fun. But maybe too much fun. Looks like someone left their shorts in the hot tub. I think I'll leave them right where they are. The handrail looks plenty sturdy and functional. This face looks like it was mounted here to hold flowers or something. Someone's dropped a cork into this mounted base. The opening's too narrow to get my hand in. I'd break it, but it looks like it's made out of ceranide, that new unbreakable plastic. The cork looks like a typical champagne cork with some wire mesh on it. Hmm, wire mesh. Even chlorinated water looks better in a champagne glass. As I fill up the mounted vase, the champagne cork flows to the top. I'm just gonna reach in and pick it up. I can just get this piece of wire. There we go. Shoelace. I hope it hasn't been used inappropriately. Well, I guess one of the escort girls left her bikini top. Oh, attractive marble benches. Sick, a yucky band-aid. Beer cans. 
No, they're empty. This towel rack looks plenty sturdy and functional. You try scrubbing it out, you try soaking it out, but Sal's still got that ring around the collar. Oh, there's nothing like a fluffy, downy scented towel. Oh, yuck, the towel smells like mildew and fine hops. Looks like a couple of objects have fallen into the drain. With that screwdriver, I could undo the screws on this drain cover and get that roll of film. Looks like a roll of film down there. I believe it's a roll of nutty pictures. Photomatic Plus Film Developing Kit. How convenient. These pictures are sick. Francesca will be so happy. for how about something delicious but not too fattening there's a dairy air not far from here try the super tofu burger Gorgeous, you're back! <laughs> Did you get the evidence I need? I think I might. Let me look inside my overcoat. Oh, excellent! This will do the job nicely. <laughs> I'll answer all your questions now. I was up late having some espresso, then I saw you get the jump. The guy who hit you was real small, maybe a 5'6", 130 pounds. I didn't see his face. He took your package you were carrying, then ran off. It looked like a professional hit, but he wasn't trying to kill you. Believe me, if he wanted to, he could have. After the first guy took off, I saw another guy come running down from your office. He bent over you and went through your coat. Then he ran off too. I recognized the second guy. He was a mutant named Pug. In the fact, I remember seeing him hanging around your office for the past few days. Anyway, I went over to make sure you were okay. Sal showed up a few minutes later and I made him carry you up to your office. That's all I know. Pug is ugly as sin and smells like he sleeps in a latrine. On and off for the past week or so, I've seen him keeping an eye on your office. He opened that radioactive shack across to the street. I haven't spoken with him yet. Hiya, matey! Well, Pug and I used to hang out sometimes. But I haven't seen him for a while. I heard he's gotten a job of some kind. He doesn't work very often, and he usually sleeps in a box down by the Snow White warehouse. Following Beak's instructions, I hang around the warehouse. Not long after, a gust of wind carries a horrible stench into my nasal passages. I turn and see a shadowy figure waddle into the alley. The way you look at me, it makes me nervous. 
I want my wallet and some information, and I want it now. I must be going now. Listen, I brought my gun. I don't fire as many warning shots as I used to. This talk of guns has frightened me. I think I've soiled myself. You know, I don't care what you think. Because right this second you've got one foot in the grave, and the other's on a big fat banana peel. Yes, and what the right do I have to think? You despise me, don't you? Please don't kill me. Usually I wouldn't think twice about punching out a two-bit crook like you. But you just get my knuckles all grimy. Why are you treating me like I'm some kind of criminal? Because I can't justify treating you like a lady. You're a cynical person, if you'll forgive my saying so. Who, me? Cynical? What a load of crap. Now give me my wallet before I break you in half. Here's your wallet. You will see I have spent very little of your money. Tell me, how did you find me? I was downwind, El Stinko. Well, pardon me. I'll go take a bath. Well, if you live through this conversation, you're gonna have plenty of time to bathe. Now tell me why you were following me. I was hired to follow you. I provide people with information through ways of my own. <laughs> people actually hire you? <laughs> Who's the sap that had you following me? I was hired by an old P.I. who called himself the Colonel. He paid me to follow you and report back on everyone I saw you talk to. He also wanted me to tell him if I saw you with a little statue of a bird. He told me very little else, though he said that he had to find out if you could be trusted. There, I have told you everything I know. Now let me go, and I shall not bother you again. The Colonel was my mentor in the detective biz. When I was a young, idealistic crime fighter, I didn't understand some of the Colonel's unethical PI methods. I reported the Colonel to the PI licensing board and his license was temporarily revoked. In the years since, I've come to understand and even occasionally use the Colonel's questionable methods, but we've never made up. I haven't seen the Colonel's office since we fell out 15 years ago. From the look of the exterior, the Colonel's kept it up nicely. I knock on the door and it swings open. The place is trashed. Mm. Oh, I guess I'm going to have to put off that trip to the Caribbean. <coughs> Maybe permanently. My God, what happened? Who did this to you? A chameleon. Uh, he's some kind of shapeshifter. I swear he's the devil himself. What did he want? Why did he attack you? Oh, he thought I had it. When he found out I didn't, he tried to torture me and to tell him where it was. And he got impatient, stuck a knife in my chest. I must have passed out. I ain't enough sleep last night. Was... <sighs> no. What was he looking for? Ah, oh, the winter chip. The cult wants it now. They're planning a doomsday party. They're afraid whoever's got the chip might stop them. You're gonna have to find it and get it to Capricorn. Yeah, they know what to do with it. <sighs> but I don't know where to look. You gotta give me some help. Uh, there's no time. There's a disc by the bookcase that's got information on the winter chip. Don't fail me, Tex. I hope to God you've learned something after all these years. <laughs> I fly the colonel to the hospital and the attendants rush him into surgery, but won't tell me what his chances are. I know I should go and search the colonel's office for the disc he referred to, but I'm having a hard time keeping my eyelids popped open. I decide to go back to my office for a couple of hours of shut-eye. As I open the door, I catch a whiff of expensive perfume, then feel my jaw slam into a brick wall. When my vision clears, I'm seated across from a beautiful oriental woman with matching goons on either side of me. Good evening, Mr. Murphy. Please, have a seat. 
Oh, you must be from the massage palace. Wait a second, I'll get my towel. You are either braver or more foolish than I thought. No one talks to Eddie Ching like that. You're Eddie Ching? Sorry, I didn't realize who you were. I like that tone of voice. Now sit down quietly and listen to me. Okay, if you promise not to let your large friends here break my legs. I'm glad you understand the situation, Mr. Murphy. I have learned that you were hired to steal a statuette for my apartment. I admire the skill you display in doing so, but I must now ask you to return the bird to me. Life is hard, Ching. I was hired to return the statuette to its rightful owner. Unfortunately, someone stole it from me before I could return it to her. It's gone? You imbecile! Have you no idea what you've done? You were set up. The person who hired you belongs to a group so powerful, they may hold the fate of the world in their hands. The statuette is worthless, except to this cult. And I went to great lengths to keep it from them. And all it took was one idiotic P.I. to give these fanatics the talisman they need to lose the demons of hell upon the earth. Oh, please. You really believe all that satanic mumbo-jumbo? You obviously don't understand what I'm saying. With the statuette, the cult will fulfill its prophecies, unleashing an unimaginable flood of destruction. The prophecy is supposed to be fulfilled in six days. If the statuette is not recovered before then, nothing will matter. We'll all be dead. You mean to tell me the world is going to end on Thursday? Damn it! I don't get my unemployment check till Friday. The cult knows about me. They tried several times to steal the statuette once they learned I had it. They will not allow me or my operatives to obstruct their plans. You, however, they do not consider to be a threat. The cult is behind the crusade for genetic purity. I don't know any more than what I've told you, except for the identity of the man who set you up. He is known as the Chameleon. If you can find him, you will be within reach of the statuette. You should realize that your blunder makes you responsible for 10 billion lives. Hope for your own sake that you can succeed where more powerful people cannot. Let this be a reminder to you not to repeat your mistakes. If you fail, I will see you in hell! <gasps> so, did he have the chip or not? I never found out. My usual methods of persuasion weren't working. So I had to get a little more forceful. Next thing I know is Light Squad. I think I killed him. Dead men don't help us. We've got to find out about that chip. If the Colonel didn't have the chip, then he probably sent it to Murphy. Stick around and keep tabs on him until the last second. But don't kill him. If the chip doesn't show up, make sure Murphy doesn't blunder into our path. If you find the chip, destroy it. Then you can do what you want with Murphy. <laughs> <laughs>